Crispy skin, moist and tender meat, aromas wafting throughout the house that make you feel warm inside. That is the beauty of the roasted chicken. This roasted chicken can be your reality in less than an hour. Wet brine, dry brine, trust, air fried, there's a million different ways to roast a chicken, including my ultimate roasted chicken where I combine basically all of those methods into one. The one that I do the most frequently though is the one that balances great product with speed and efficiency. That method is spatchcocking or butterflying your chicken. There's no waiting, it's just prepare it, season it, roast it, as simple as that. It's done in less than an hour quicker than it takes to watch an episode of season eight Game of Thrones, which I finally got around to watching. And after hearing how awful the ending was, I honestly didn't think it was terrible. Kind of like when you order a burger and fries or something and then you come back and you get like a chicken sandwich, it's like, you're not too happy about it, but you're still gonna eat it anyway. Anyway though, let's get back on topic and learn how to roast a spatchcock chicken. To spatchcock a chicken, all we're doing is removing the backbone and splaying it flat. So to cut out the backbone, I would suggest using kitchen shears, but today I'm going to show you how to do that with a chef's knife. And a chef's knife, you probably will do a little bit of damage to your edge, so it's not ideal, but I'm going to show you guys anyway. And what you want to do is just flip this on its neck, and then you're going to slice down the backbone right along the edge. The bone should go through fairly easy, but there's going to be one spot where you got to apply some pressure. Then after you get that bone off the one side, you're just gonna cut along the edge and remove everything else doing the same exact thing. And just like that, we have our backbone and you're not allowed to throw this away because we are making stock at the end of this video. So place two hands right on the chicken breast like you're about to do CPR. Ah, 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 staying alive, staying alive. And then with one forceful push, you're gonna break the breastbone. And then when you flip this over, you can see it just lies very flat. So to roast this, I'm just going to put a wire cookie rack on top of a baking sheet, and that's going to provide airflow for our chicken. And then to season this, all I'm using is salt and pepper. And make sure you're getting the salt and pepper all over the nooks and crannies, all over the chicken. You're going to flip it over and do it on the back side as well. All right, and I know I say this a lot, but salt here is the most important key to making this chicken taste good. I don't care how much garlic or spices or other herbs you throw at this chicken, it's not going to taste good if you don't use sufficient salt. So make sure you lather that thing very liberally and get all the salt and pepper that you need. Then we're gonna do the same thing with our pepper and get pepper all over that chicken, all over the nooks and crannies as much as you want to. And remember how I said not to throw away that backbone. We're gonna season this with salt and pepper as well and actually roast it with the chicken because we're gonna use the leftover roasted chicken bones in our stock, so you want them both to be roasted. Then I'm gonna come in with just a little bit of a neutral vegetable oil. This is a tablespoon, you don't need much, but you're gonna spread this all over the skin of the chicken and this is gonna promote even browning. You don't have to do this step, but I provide it gets a lot better crust than if I don't put just a little bit of oil. And like I said, it's only a tablespoon for the whole chicken. And then the last little thing we wanna to do to prepare our chicken for the oven is just tuck the wings behind the breast kind of and just put it like under that skin. They're gonna cook a lot faster so you kinda of wanna tuck them and protect them. Before I throw this in the oven, I do wanna talk chicken temperature. So I wanna pull this chicken when it reaches about 150 degrees Fahrenheit in the breast and above 175 degrees Fahrenheit in the thigh or the dark meat. And if anyone is worried that 150 degrees Fahrenheit is a little bit too low for their chicken, I'll link an article that actually goes into the science behind it, and you guys can check that out if you want to. And then we're gonna roast this for 40 to 50 minutes in the oven. It's gonna be pretty high heat, so if there is some smoke that comes up, don't worry, that's normal. You may just have to be 
nearby for your smoke alarm, but that's how we're going to get that nice and crispy crust. Then halfway through, you can pull out that neck bone um, because that's going to be cooked through enough for our stock, and that's just going to give us so much flavor when we make this chicken soup later this week. So after 45 minutes, you want to check the temperature of your chicken. And like I said, I'm shooting for 150 in the breast and above 175 in the thigh. Unfortunately, I was a little bit high in the breast here, so it may have dried out a little bit. But what we're going to do is just transfer this to a cutting board and let it rest for at least 10 minutes to let everything kind of settle down. And this is a perfect moment to blitz together our Peruvian green sauce, which is going to save anything if you do happen to overcook it a little bit like I did. So for this kind of Peruvian-ish, it's like based off an ahi verde sauce, really basic to make and basically all you have to do is throw everything into the blender. Normally I use two jalapenos for this sauce, but I decided to substitute a tablespoon of my fermented habanero and poblano hot sauce. And then for the jalapenos, I'm just taking out the seeds and the membrane and then we're just going to crush down our garlic real quick. And let me show you guys a little tip that you can do to get more juice out of your limes. So just throw it in the microwave for about 20 to 30 seconds, and that's gonna help everything steam up in there and let all that juices come out so much easier when you go to squeeze it. So we're just gonna come in with the juice of one lime, and then I'm gonna add a little, little sprinkle of salt to help that dissolve. And then we're gonna come in with our garlic, our jalapenos, our cilantro, and then coming in with that green hot sauce. And then I'm gonna give this a preliminary kind of blitz just to help break down those vegetables a little bit. And then now I'm gonna come in with our mayonnaise using about a quarter cup and then using the same amount of yogurt just to kind of help balance that, provide a little bit extra fat to the sauce and also some nice sourness. And then we're gonna drizzle in two tablespoons of olive oil while it's blending to help kind of emulsify everything together. And then that green color will really start to come out. Then as always, be tasting your sauces. I decided to just add a little bit more salt and pepper and it was good to go. And I'm telling you, this sauce is absolutely money. It goes so good on anything, meats, roasted vegetables. It's, it's just one of a kind. Now in the time that it makes your sauce, your chicken should be well rested. And now we can just break this down. The legs should come right off. You literally shouldn't nearly need to do anything. And then what I do is just after the legs are off, cut in between the thigh and the drumstick into separate pieces. You can leave them as is if you want to though. And then do a similar thing for the wings. I'm just gonna kind of bend and look for that hinge and then just gently slide your knife through. You're not chopping any bones like we were when we spatchcock at the beginning of this video. And then for the breast, what I like to do is just gently slide away my knife and just start to separate that breast meat on one side. And then I actually flip it over to remove those bones um, on that outer edge. And you can really just pick them apart. They don't need to be sliced all that much, but use your knife as you do if there's a little bit of cartilage or you just need to get through some skin or something. But you can flip this over and then we just got this nice full breast. And even though I did get a little bit hotter than I wanted, it's still very juicy and was really happy with this chicken. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing on the other side, just kind of slicing down on the other side of that breastbone, flipping it over and removing all of those bones. And make sure you guys save this carcass. I'm gonna show you how to make the easiest chicken stock in the world. And to serve this kind of like on a platter, what I like to do is slice up the breast into a bunch of pieces, and then we're gonna assemble everything together and kind of replicate what the chicken looks like, except broken out into different pieces. So you're just gonna add your breast, your wings, you're gonna throw on the legs and the thighs, and then I'm just gonna add the two little dishes of sauce, and I'm telling you, if you slide this plate in front of anyone, tell me that just doesn't bring some happiness. Thank you. 
So now it's time to make the easiest stock in the world. So all you're gonna do is take all your leftover bones and just throw them into a pot. And then you're gonna fill them with water. And the water is very important. You don't wanna use too much or else you dilute your stock. We want all those bones to break down the collagen and give it gelatin. So you really just wanna fill it until the bones have just been covered up. Then all we're gonna do is throw the whole pot into the oven at 190 degrees Fahrenheit, and you can go to bed and check this in the morning. And then this is the next morning. I let this go for about 10 hours overnight. You really can't mess this up at all. You could throw aromatics in, like if you wanted to add, you know, onion, carrot, celery, but I'm just keeping it super basic since I'm gonna be adding some aromatics and herbs to our chicken uh, noodle soup recipe. But all you wanna do is take your bones out, strain this off and then just throw this in the fridge or the freezer and we'll talk more about this stock when the chicken noodle soup recipe comes out. So that is gonna wrap it up. I want you to add roasting a chicken to your Sunday to-do list. You, your friends, your family, whoever is eating it will be happy and enjoy the experience. And like I said, it's, it's done in less than an hour and we get to set ourselves up for a nice creamy chicken noodle soup that is gonna come out in a couple days. Also guys, I have started a Patreon page where if you wanna support me um, other than watching, you can do so. It's the first link in the description of the video. Would mean a lot if you decide to, but in by no means is it necessary at all. Just keep watching, commenting, liking, and we'll keep this thing going. That's gonna wrap it up for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.